Big Al. Um, thanks for watching my last vlog. Um, today we're going to do another dumb sports vlog. I got two segments for you guys today. Um, so my first one is my snap of the week. This is the segment where I snap away something in the sports world that either I don't like, something happened, right? Something went wrong. So this week we're snapping away the Washington R words. Now this is a big turnaround because on Monday I said we need to, or the, the Redskins need to use this as an opportunity to move forward. The Angels changed their colors, uh, their color scheme. They changed it around 2002. They ended up winning the World Series. A couple of teams changed their colors. They changed their name. Um, and then they kind of turned things around for them, give them some momentum, right? I said they can use this as an opportunity to grow. When in turn, four days later, they just blew up the, the whole franchise, right? So what happened exactly in Washington? So Monday, they announced their name change. They're gonna change their name, which is cool. Um, it's gonna be less racist towards Native American people. That's great. And then um, Wednesday, it comes out that the Washington Post has an article that supposedly is gonna blow the whole franchise up. And instantly, Twitter went crazy. Twitter's kinda like that overreacting uncle that you have that will take some kind of situation and they'll blow it up into something that it's not really so what Twitter did is they said <laughs> that Dan Snyder the owner of the Redskins and Jay Gruden former coach and a couple executives in the Washington front office were connected to <laughs> were connected to Jeffrey Epstein and uh, Glazane, Glazane, I don't even know how to say her name, Glazane Maxwell and the Clintons and their little pedophile island. So Twitter took that and ran with it. They thought that that was the article. So then it comes out on Thursday that the article was actually 15 sexual harassment claims against the, the Washington organization, which, I mean, good for those, those people that came out. And it wasn't just women, it was men too. <laughs> I, I looked into it to see what was actually going on, what the articles were saying. And one executive was a, a male cheerleader in college and um, Dan Snyder found out about it and he kept asking him to do cartwheels and backflips and stuff like that to entertain him. <laughs> what kind of a dickhead? Um, I mean, just, they've had terrible ownership for years. And and any Redskins fan will tell you that that owner needs to go. I think he's been around for like 21 something years. Um, they need new ownership bad. So I'm not gonna snap them away into dust. I'm gonna snap them into Europe. The NFL's been talking about sending a team to London for phew, 10 plus years. And it's always thought it was gonna be the Jaguars because Shad Khan is from the Middle East and um, he'd be closer to home and he knows the market better. Why not send Washington? They're in the NFC East, so it doesn't get more East than London, right? The London, has, the London fan base is incredible. I mean, we can tell with the soccer games, they put out thousands and thousands of fans, millions of dollars spending each year. Um, even, even when we send teams to London, and I think it's four or five games a year now we're sending to London, they're making a ton of money. Send the Redskins to London. They can change their names all they want. They can be the, the London phone booths or the taxi cabs, the James Bonds, the Crumpets, whatever fish and chips, whatever London's famous for. Make them the new London football team in the NFL's expansion to get overseas, right? Everyone wants out. And the, the minority investors, the minority owners of the, the organization, they want out. They hired Mogan and Company, um, which is a financial group, a group of financial advisors that um, they pretty much do this. They sell and buy the, the minority shares of um, teams. They worked with the, the Baltimore Ravens, the Miami Dolphins, the entire NBA um, organization. So they want out. They didn't hire some Joe Schmo to get them out of Washington. They, they hired the big deal. So who even wants in? Who wants into an organization that's going to um, be known for that sexual harassment and be known for abuse, verbal abuse? Um, and they're not even winning. Like, what, what's going right in Washington? I mean, usually you put up with some of that stuff if you're winning, but, I mean, nothing's going right in Washington. The only thing, if they're not going to have this insane logo change, that turns their franchise around, send them to London. Boom, snap, London, cross the pond, right? So my other segment is my top five, Big Al's top five. <clears throat> so I love doing these lists. Um, I did one the other day, I did, what did I do the other day? 
Uh, it doesn't matter. I did today. I'm gonna do my top five sports bucket list, right? So this is kind of what you would want to do. Either go to a game or do something um, sports related. This is my list of top five top five sports bucket list of things I'm gonna do before I die. <laughs> Number five, the Olympics. Um, I want to go to the Olympic opening ceremony or some events or something. I want to do something with the Olympics. And it's actually coming to Los Angeles, about 60 miles away from me in 2028. So I'll be, I'll be 10 years older, but um, I mean, I'll get to go see it and I'll get to see some events and everything like that. Um, number four, running with the bulls. Who wouldn't want to run with the bulls? It's like shark cage diving or jumping out of an airplane. You know, bulls are crazy. You know, I would just be running the whole time. You see those videos where the guys are running and then they turn around to look at the bull. Nope. I would be the, the fastest guy out there at all 270 pounds of me sprinting down the street in Spain. I think that'd be sweet. Um, number three, this is a new one. All right, so you have to have watched Home Game on Netflix. The very first episode, they, it's called Calcio Storico. It happens in Florence, Italy, and these guys are just these Guido Italian guys that are yoked and athletic and this is what they've done their whole lives and pretty much it's like a combination of rugby soccer and kind of like mma and they just go back and forth beating the shit out of each other and they do whatever they can to stop the other team from advancing the ball and throwing it in the goal and these guys i mean they get so injured and they do it once a year in florence italy and it's only in florence italy they just beat the shit out of each other i mean it's it's like football but with no rules like prison rules football and part of like soccer because i guess they're throwing the ball in the net it's just unbelievable watch home game at least the first episode watch the first episode of home game on netflix man i was i want to see that someday they only do it once a year because these guys take, probably take a whole year to recover guys tear ligaments they break bones they break their jaws um i mean it's nuts all right watch watch home game all right number two um i want to go to el clasico El Clasico is the biggest, probably the biggest soccer game in the world. It happens in Spain between um, Madrid and Barcelona. Now, I, I struggled with this one because I've been to Barcelona and I've been to London. The people in London crack me up. Man, they, these guys, you watch the, the, the bar fights and the, all the stuff that happens over soccer games. These guys sing their, their British anthems and they sing in bars and stuff like that. I love those guys. So... I thought about going to, I didn't know what was like a huge game in England. I know Manchester United, you got all the clubs out there pretty popular. But El Clasico, especially when I would have gone years ago with um, Ronaldo and Messi facing off against each other. But I feel like that's like one of the big soccer games you, you can go to in the world. So I'd want to go to Europe and see one of the biggest soccer games, either El Clasico or one of the British soccer games. You know, those, those people go nuts, man. Number one. Super Bowl. Who doesn't want to go to the Super Bowl? Any American that doesn't want to go to the Super Bowl is not even American, <laughs> right? <laughs> the Super Bowl, the creme de la creme, man, I think it's coming to LA in a few years too. I got to save up like five grand, <laughs> buy a ticket to go to the Super Bowl. I don't even care who's playing. I don't care if the Steelers are in it or not. I'd go. I'd go if the Patriots were in it. I'd go if, you know, whatever team, the Ravens, Whoever I hate the most, the Browns, I would go. I would go if I had the opportunity. So that's my number one Super Bowl, biggest game of the year, you know, probably around the world, just because, I mean, we love it so much and we put so many ratings and money into it. But that's my, that's my top, Big Al's top five sports bucket list. Um, thanks for watching another one of my blogs, you know, I'm sitting here goofing off talking about sports. Um, some stupid takes just having fun with it like and subscribe um follow me on twitter thanks for watching guys appreciate it